just give everyone a moment to come in from the waiting room. As a reminder, please mute yourself unless you are appearing for the board. Good afternoon. This is a hearing before the licensing board for the city of Boston. Today is Wednesday, April 28th, 2021. Today's hearing is being conducted pursuant to certain temporary amendments to the open meeting law. That is what allows us to meet virtually. This hearing will be recorded and will be posted to the city of Boston's website. Before I review some procedural matters, I will introduce Chairwoman Kathleen Joyce. Good afternoon. My name is Kathleen Joyce. I'm chair of the licensing board. I'm pleased to be joined today by Commissioner Kiana Saxon and Commissioner Liam Curran. Thank you. As a reminder, again, please mute yourself unless you are actively presenting to the board or testifying. I will read each item as it appears on the agenda, after which I will ask who is present on behalf of the licensee or applicant. Please be prepared to unmute yourself and identify yourself and your role with the application. You will be provided the opportunity to present your proposal to the board, after which there will be questions from the chairwoman and the commissioners. Following the, the questions, we will take public comment, beginning with elected officials and their representatives, followed by uh, community members. Please limit your comments to two minutes. Please, if you are stating something that has already been stated by someone previous, please simply state that. The board does not give additional weight to spoken testimony over written testimony. You can also submit any supplemental testimony via email to the board. Calling Third Sector New England Inc. doing business as Future Chefs located at 295 to 311 Blue Hill Avenue has applied for a common vigilar license to be exercised on the above 1,062 1, square feet of teaching and production kitchen, 183 square feet of dish room, 163 square feet of walk-in cooler and freezer, 162 square feet of dry storage, all on one ground level unit located at 305 Blue Hill Avenue. Manager, Sam Putnam, hours of operation, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Who is present on behalf of the applicant? Hi, please state your name for the record. Hi, Aquila Kentish, and I believe Sam is also here, Sam Putnam. Sam Putnam, I'm here. Uh, Kathleen, you are muted. Here we go. Thanks for joining us today. Could you tell us a little bit about what you're proposing? Yes, so Future Chefs is, um, we're a youth program. Um, we've been around since 2008, and we just now moved into the, the new building um, here on Blue Hill Ave. And we have a social enterprise model where we teach, um, as a part of our program, we teach young youth, um, young people in the city culinary art skills. And we're also giving them the opportunity to learn some entrepreneurial skills um, and life skills. And part of the way that we're doing that is through our um, social enterprise, which will be a, um, well, we're gonna be having a takeout food establishment. Um, that's a pretty basic gist of it. <laughs> okay, so there'll be there'll be no seats. It's just all takeout. Yeah, right now we're applying for no seating. Um, just all takeout. Okay. And catering. Okay, and you'll be operating seven a.m. to seven p.m. seven days a week. Um, so right now we have a, a our pro we're a youth program, so we have I just kind of put it pretty pretty broad. Um, so between those hours, um, most of our programming takes place Monday through Friday. Um, in our af after school hours, so between the hours of four and, and 6.30, um, but we will, we, we'd like to have the option to be able to, you know, maybe do some um, longer programming, and particularly over the summer, that's, that flip-flops where most of our program is during, during, happening during the day. Um, so we just kind of want to have the flexibility to operate within that time frame, but we're not necessarily going to be operational for all of that time frame. Okay, thank you. Um... Uh, it sounds like a, a very interesting um, proposal you have. I don't have any questions, Commissioner Saxon or Commissioner Curran. I don't, thank you. Thank you, seeing no questions, are there any individuals who wish to testify regarding this application, beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board, Jason Gam from the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. We would like to go on record in support of this proposal. They have, com they have completed the community process and also have addressed any concerns from the direct abutters and neighbors. And they have been working with the Project Right Incorporated Neighborhood Association just to you know, answer any other concerns that may come up and that come up in the future as well. And I would also urge them to continue to work with Project Right. 
Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other individuals who wish to testify regarding this application? Seeing none, the board will take this matter under advisement. Thank you very much. Thank you. Calling Compass Group USA, Inc., located at 500 Logan Airport, Terminal E. Holder of an airport common vigilator seven day all alcoholic beverages license has petitioned to change the manager of the license business to Maggie Lawler. Who is present on behalf of the licensee? Hi, Maggie Lawler here. Hi, please go ahead. Hi. Um, can you tell us a little bit about what you're proposing here? Um, so we're just changing the name from the previous manager. I'm the new manager taking over the location and they've, they're have they not working there anymore. Okay, so you'll be the manager of record? Yes. Um, are you a citizen? Yes. Are you a resident of the Commonwealth? Yes. Do you have experience in the food and beverage industry? Yes. Are you familiar with the rules and regs of this board, the ABCC and the laws of the Commonwealth as they pertain to the sale and service of alcohol? Yes. Okay, uh, thank you, Ms. Lawler. I don't have any questions, commissioners, do you? Seeing no questions, are there any individuals who wish to testify regarding this application? Seeing none, the board will take this matter under advisement. Thank you. Thank you. Calling Beantown Burger Company, doing business as Boston Burger Company, located at 1100 Boylston Street. Holder of a common vigilator seven day wine and malt beverages license has petitioned to change the manager of the license business to Justin Lissenby. Who is present on behalf of the applicant? Justin Lissenby, I'm here. I'm not voting. Okay. Um, thank you. Um, any changes to operations other than the manager of a record today that we're talking no, about? Sim simply just manager of record change. Okay. So, Mr. Lizenby, are you a citizen? I am. Are you a resident of the Commonwealth? Yes, I am. Do you have experience in the food and beverage industry? Yes, I do. Are you familiar with the rules and regs of this board, the ABCC and the laws of the Commonwealth as they pertain to the sale and service of alcohol? Yes, I am. Okay, thank you. I don't have any questions, commissioners, do you? Are there any individuals who wish to testify regarding this application? Seeing none, the board will take this matter under advisement. Thank you. Thank you. Calling Soralina LLC, doing business as Soralina, located at 1 Huntington Avenue. Holder of the common vigilator seven day all alcoholic beverages license has petitioned to amend the description of the license business from in one room on first floor kitchen and storage and rear to in one room on first floor kitchen and storage and rear. In addition, will include a 1,325 square foot patio on private property in front of the restaurant entrance consisting of 14 tables and 60 seats. It will have one main entrance exit and one exit at the other end. Seasonal operation from April through October. Hours of operation, 4 p.m. to midnight. Who is present on behalf of the licensee? Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Um, my name is Dominic Minots. I'm the general manager of Sorlina Restaurant. Uh, I've been there since 2006. And uh, okay to go ahead with our proposal? Yes. Okay. Uh, we are proposing a... Um, permanent patio space in front of our restaurant outside. It's curly, currently a landscaping bed and we're gonna turn it into a hard uh, permeable surface. Again, as stated with 60 seats and 14 tables. Um, and it's we want it to be obviously an extension of our restaurant um, with the, uh, you know, the first patio season last year. Uh, we've recognized that it's been well received. Um, by residents, by the neighborhood, um, and guests, and uh, worked with the uh, the condo board and the residents of Trinity Place, and uh, they are in support of it. So uh, we, we're looking forward to doing it, and um, looking uh, forward to having it be a, uh, a great addition to our restaurant, uh, as well as uh, an amenity for the residents and something that uh, the Back Bay could be uh, could be proud of. Okay, thank you. So the hours of operation um, on the patio, if, if they're 4 p.m. to midnight, would that match the closing hour inside the restaurant? Yes. Okay. I don't have any questions, Commissioner Saxon or Commissioner Curran. Thank you. Are there any individuals who wish to testify regarding this application beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board, Shanice Pimentel with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. Um, we held an abutters meeting for this proposal on March 31st. Um, this was overwhelmingly supported by the community, including um, by the Back Bay Association. 
Um, we have no concerns regarding this proposal at all, and we would like to go on record in support. Thank you. Good Thank afternoon, you. Madam of the Chair, members of the board, Anna Calderon from Councillor Flink's office. The councillor would like to go on record in support. Thank you. Thank you. And I see that Meg Mainzer Cohen has her hand raised. Thank you, Meg Mainzer Cohen. I'm here in support of this application. We think it's going to be a great addition to the neighborhood, and we're thrilled with the plans. We've looked at them thoroughly. Thank you. Thank you. And Conrad Armstrong. I'm Conrad Armstrong, um, Marlboro Street, representing the Neighborhood Association of Back Bay. Um, we uh, now has no opposition to this proposal, except we were under the uh, understanding that the closing hours were going, going to be 11 p.m. on Friday, Saturday night, and 10, 10 p.m. the other days of the week. Dominique, do you have a comment? Because we had multiple communications about this. Yeah, yes, uh, Conrad, thank you. Uh, so uh, in, in the application 4 p.m. to midnight, I just want to uh, I did put that on the application just to uh, mirror what the, the CV license currently says for Sorolina, but I do go, want to go on record by saying that uh, with the uh, with Trinity Place condominium, they, they were we agreed upon uh, 10 p.m. closing because that's when the restaurant closes inside and on during the week, Sunday through Thursday, and then the restaurant's hours close at 11 p.m. So essentially, I just put the same 12 a.m. because that's what our CV license says inside the restaurant, which doesn't necessarily, which doesn't mean that the, the, the restaurant operation is going to go that late. Uh, excuse me, the patio operation. Thank you very much. Can I make a comment, Ryan Vickers? I'm oh, sorry, uh, just one moment, sir. We'll call everyone who wishes yeah. to testify. Okay. I apologize, Thank I switched you. over uh, Kennedy Avery from Councilor Bach's office. Kennedy? Hi, yeah, Kennedy from Councillor Bach's office. Just wanted to state that Councillor Bach would like to go on record in support of this applicant. Thank you. Are there any other individuals who wish to testify regarding this application? Please state your name and your address. Yes, Ryan Dickers. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Please go ahead. Yeah. State your address. So I'm a resident. I am a resident, One Huntington Avenue, apartment 1801, and I'm in the butter actually. Uh, my unit is above this, uh, this terrace. Um, I'm not a fan, quite honestly, of a terrace with 60 people right under my bedroom. Uh, but uh, the majority of the residents at Trinity has um, expressed their support. I was also shocked by the fact that the application is till midnight, because we were clearly told that it would be till 10 o'clock. And that makes a huge difference when you're trying to sleep in your bedroom, whether it's 10 o'clock where the place stops playing music and loud people in, on the terrace and, and who knows smoking and whatever else goes on um, at a terrace like that versus uh, midnight. So if the intention is to do it at till 10, then I think the application should be approved till 10 and not a minute late. Thank you. And for the record, there is no smoking permitted on restaurant patios. Are there any other individuals who wish to testify regarding this application? Uh, yes. Uh, sorry, may I go? Yes, please state your full name and your address. For okay. The sure. My name is uh, Dan Donio. I'm the president of Saunders Hotel Group. We own and manage the Lennox Hotel, and we are in extreme favor of this patio as, as we see restaurants and bars closing up all around us. It's nice to see the one that is actually expanding. So we are, Dominic and his team do a great job, and we can't wait for our be able to send our guests there. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other individuals who have not previously testified who wish to testify? Uh, Chairwoman Joyce, did you have a question? I just want to clarify for the record, what is your intent for the operating hours for the patio? Okay, thank you very much. And you know, again, I, wa I want to clarify that in it, you know, it, it's, I'm in no way or, you know, shape or form trying to you know, change the hours. Uh, and again, we can clarify this, um, uh, Ms. Joyce. Okay. Uh, again, with, with the Trinity, and if it needs to be changed on the license to reflect that, I it's you know I have absolutely no problem with that whatsoever. Uh, again, I put the midnight hours because I I didn't know, and you just want to clarify, I didn't know that if they should be the twelve o'clock time should be the same time that's listed on the CV license indoors because my intention was not to change the operating hours for the, the establishment in its entirety. 
Okay. So my confusion and apprehension was that, you know, the insider license is 12 o'clock. So is that what the license should be in, in for the whole space? So again, with Trinity Place, I want to make it very clear that we agreed that Sunday through Thursday, the closing hour on the patio would be 10 p.m. And Friday and Saturday, the closing hour would be 11 p.m. And I know that the gentleman had mentioned something about music. There's no mu music allowed outside. We don't want it to be loud and boisterous. Obviously, there's no smoking. Um, I've been the general manager on the property for two th since 2006. I've been the license holder there since 2006. Um, and again, I, I, want, I, I made sure I did my community process to make sure that we satisfied everybody's concerns. Uh, you know, with residents, abutters, uh, NABB, Back Bay Associates. I just want to make it very clear that I'm not trying to do, uh, you know, oh. pull the wool over. No, I don't, I don't think you are. I just wanted to clarify for the record, because I know those applications <laughs> are confusing. And I think, I think it's, it's clear you were just trying to match the inside of the license. So we'll work with you on that. We'll make sure we get it right. Okay. Thanks. Thank, Thank you. you very much. The board will take this matter under advisement. Calling Chang Zin Global Creations Co. doing business as Bootleg Special, located at 400 Tremont Street. Holder of a common vigilar seven day wine and malt beverages with liqueurs license has petitioned to transfer the license and location from the above to Torah Ramen Inc. doing business as Torah Ramen, located at 99 Harrison Avenue. The premise consists of a ground floor with full kitchen, dining area, dining area, seating capacity of 16, and two accessible restrooms with a loft area for storage and office use. Total square footage is 645 square feet. Hours of operation, Sunday to Thursday, 11 a.m. to midnight. Friday and Saturday, 11 a.m. to 1 a.m. Patrick Zong, manager, attorney Adam Chu. Attorney Chu. Is attorney Chu present? Attorney Chu, can you unmute yourself, please? We cannot hear you. Uh, he is. Okay. There you go. We can hear you now. Thank you. Good afternoon. Uh, I'm here with my client, Patrick Zong, who is the owner and uh, proposed manager for the beer and wine with the Curs license uh, transfer. Oh, we, I'm sorry. There he is. The, the premises is a, a small ramen take it. Um, dining establishment with 16 seats. And this will be uh, Mr. Zong's uh, first license for liquor. He's uh, applied for TIPS training. And uh, the hours that we're requesting, uh, we've run by the various neighborhood associations. We've gone through community process with Chinatown Neighborhood Council, Chinatown Safety Committee. We reached out to the uh, Chinatown Residents Association, but were unsuccessful in getting in touch with them. Then we reached out to the Office of Neighborhood Services uh, liaison, Lisa High, to try to assist us with that. She made two efforts to get in touch with the Residents Association as well without success. We proceeded with the uh, Office of Neighborhood Services a butters meeting. We flyered the neighborhood and then we held the virtual hearing and uh, there was no attendance, and obviously because of that, no objection to it. But we did get the support from the neighborhood council as well as the residents uh, safety committee. Um, Mr. Zong is a citizen. He's a resident of Massachusetts. He's been operating the restaurant, this particular restaurant for about five months now, but he does have extensive experience in the restaurant business over 10 years of experience. And he has another restaurant also in Chinatown, Tora, uh, Tora Sushi, that uh, has been very successful, successful and well received. Thank you, Attorney Chu. And just my, thank you for explaining that all. And uh, my final question for uh, Mr. Zong is, are you familiar with the rules and regulations of this board, the ABCC and the laws of the Commonwealth as they pertain to the sale and service of alcohol? Yes, I do. Okay, thank you. I don't have any other questions. Commissioner Saxon or Commissioner Curran? Seeing no questions, are there any individuals who wish to speak regarding this application, beginning with elected officials or their representatives? 
Good afternoon, Madam Chair and members of the board. Lisa High with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. We held an abutters meeting on February 24th, 2021. They have support from the Chinatown Neighborhood Council as well as the Chinatown Safety Committee um, and has attempted to reach out to the Chinatown Residents Association on February 24th, 2021. And our office has also attempted to reach out on um, two separate occasions in March and April of 2021, but have not um, yet been successful. At this time, our office feels comfortable in supporting, but encouraged that they continue to reach out to the community. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, Madam of the Chair, members of the board, Anna Calderon from Councillor Flynn's office. The councillor would like to go on record in opposition based on lack of community process with the Chinatown Residents Association. Councillor Flynn requests that these matters be brought to the Chinatown Residents Association, which includes many, many Cantonese speaking neighbors who deserve to be included in the community process. Um, it is our understanding that they did try to, to reach out to them with, without able to, do, um, to get in contact with them. I don't know what's, um, why is that, but we, when we reach out to them, we hear back. So in the future, Adam Chu, I, re I, I we request that you can reach out to our office so we can connect you with, with them ourselves. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other individuals who wish to testify regarding this application? Seeing none, the board will take this under advisement. Thank you. Calling Invino Veritas Bistro LLC, doing business as Les Zigomats Cafe, located at 129 South Street. Holder of a common bitchular seven day all alcoholic beverages license, has petitioned to transfer the license and location from the above to Chang Zin Global Creations Co., doing business as Bootleg Special, located at 400 Tremont Street. The premise consists of 3,500, 400 square feet of ground floor and 957 square feet of mezzanine. The ground floor has a fully equipped commercial kitchen, dining room, bar, and three restrooms, two of which are accessible. Seating capacity, 100. The mezzanine is non-public and used for dry storage, utility systems, and an administrative office. The restaurant has one front entrance and two exits. Hours of operation, Sunday through Wednesday, 4 p.m. to 11 p.m. Thursday and Friday, 4 p.m. to 2 a.m. Saturday, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Sunday, 10 a.m. to 11 p.m. Stephen Chan, manager, lastly has petitioned to pledge the license to Invino Veritas Bistro, LLC. Attorney Adam Chu, and for the record, this petition is dependent on the prior petition. Councilor Chu. Thank you, good afternoon. Uh, again, uh, I'm here with uh, Stephen Chan, the principal and proposed manager for Bootleg Special. Bootleg Special is, is the current holder of a beer and wine with liqueurs license and is seeking to upgrade to a full liquor license transferred from what was uh, formerly the restaurant Bistro Les Zigomat on South Street in the Leather District. Uh, the uh, full liquor license uh, would also be under a slightly modified hours we're proposing, uh, we're requesting to have the closing hours be changed from the current 1 a.m. to a 2 a.m. closing for Thursday, Friday, and Saturday nights. Uh, the reason for that request is because uh, the restaurant has noticed that there is a demand for them to stay open later and that customers are being inconvenienced because they have to uh, wrap up and then they go on and and move to another establishment in the area that is open to that 2 a.m. hour. So there is um, a matter of public convenience as well as just simply being more competitive to be able to offer uh, services all the way to the 2 a.m. closing for those particular nights. We've reached out to the community and our director about our Castle Square Tenants Organization uh, has provided us with this support. We've submitted a copy of the support letter from that organization. We also, again, did the uh, Office of Neighborhood Services a Butters meeting, held that, and uh, there was no opposition to that. There was one informational attendee. We also reached out separately to uh, the Ellis uh, Neighborhood Association as well as Bay Village. And uh, Ellis provided uh, their informal support. We don't have an actual formal support letter from them, but no objection. And Bay Village expressed some concerns and we were trying to 
uh, continue those discussions. We have not been successful in scheduling additional meetings with Bay Village. Um, and uh, we are certainly open to, to hearing from them, but at this point, we don't have uh, a final say, final decision from that aspect of it. The applicant um, will be managed by Stephen Chan. Again, he has experience in the industry. Uh, this restaurant in particular has been open for about four or five years now. And like, he's had the beer and wine license with no issues. He's a citizen, he's a resident of Massachusetts. He's got the tips training and he's familiar with the rules and regulations of the board. Thank you. Thank you, Attorney Chu, for covering the manager record questions. So just so I'm clear, there's going to be, you're requesting, um, because you have purchased an all alcohol license to go into this 400 Tremont Street location and the license that's originally there, which is just beer and wine would go into this 99 Harrison Ave location. Yes, that's why we're submitting concurrent applications. I gotcha, okay. Um, so just for the record, um, you'd be at, there'd be all alcohol now at the Tremont Street location. Uh, could you, for the record, describe for us the public need for an all alcohol license at this location? So the restaurant has been experiencing a lot of uh, demand, a lot of requests from their customers for particular brands of alcohol, for example, Grey Goose, uh, that they cannot provide under the beer and wine with liqueurs license. And just as a matter of business and meeting that customer demand, they feel that upgrading to a full liquor license would better serve the public good. Um, I don't have any further questions. Commissioner Saxon or Commissioner Carter? I don't. Thank you. Are there any individuals who wish to testify regarding this application, beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Hi, yes. Um, good afternoon, Madam Chair and members of the board. My name is Kim Crucioli from the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. The Mayor's Office would like to go on record in support of this proposal, and a Butters meeting was held on March 11th, where no opposition was shown by a Butters. The applicant conducted extensive community outreach with the Castle Square Tenants Organization, who are their director of others, the Ellis Neighborhood Association and Bay Village Neighborhood Association. Bay Village sent a letter of opposition regarding the extension of hours and live entertainment. The applicant re received a letter of support from the Castle Square Tenants Organization, which acknowledged that bootleg special has been a good neighbor and has caused no quality of life, uh, life concerns for the area. The mayor's office would like to acknowledge that this establishment has provided a safe environment for their patrons and our respectful residents. This request to extend the closing time to 2 a.m. and obtain a full liquor license is consistent with other establishments on Tremont Street in the South End and is no different than Wink and Nod, the Beehive, Banyan, and others. And with that, we give full support. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, Madam of the Chair, members of the board. Anna Calderon from Councilor Flynn's office. The councilor would like to go on record in support based on feedback from Bay Village Neighborhood Association as they did not work in good faith in a compromise on closing hour to, to 1 a.m. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other individuals who wish to testify regarding this application? Yes, I would like to, if I may. Uh, my name is John Shope, S-H-O-P-E. I live at 56 Bayette Street in Bay Village. Um, however, I should like to point out that it is about 300 feet from the establishment and it's a straight shot. There are, there are no buildings or anything, any other barriers to the travel of noise. Not much of an issue during the day when the pike is, is busy, but uh, late at night in the early morning hours um, when there's very little traffic on the, on the turnpike, a sound travels directly across from uh, the location of the premises right over to my house. I have uh, two uh, young children ages eight and 10. Um, I'm also here on behalf of the Bay Village Neighborhood Association. You received uh, the letter from Bay Village. Uh, essentially, the Neighborhood Association is opposing the application at this time because there was any failure to meaningfully engage with us. Um, I'd also like to point out that I've lived in the neighborhood for 20 years. I was president of the Neighborhood Association for two years back in the early 2000s. I was on the BVNA Executive Committee for over 15 years. I've been involved in many, many licensing applications uh, in, and also uh, in the generally development process served on BRA committees. So I'm fairly familiar with the general situation. And what I would say is this has been an extremely uncooperative applicant who's basically blown off Bay Village. That's number one. Um, as to the substance, 
Um, there's absolutely no reason for a 2 a.m. license for what is uh, being pr uh, presented here as a restaurant use. Um, the particular premises are now already configured mostly to be a bar. There's a very large bar that occupies um, a big part of the, of the main room. And um, basically uh, what, we're, what we're hearing is that there may be uh, weddings on a Thursday night going until 2 a.m. Um, my kids have to get to school on a school night the next morning. Um, and that's noise that's gonna go directly to me and, and, and my neighbors. There's no business justification for it. The other thing I, I can say is, you know, for so many years we've heard various applicants who want a 2 a.m. license and they say it's because there's a late night demand. There is no late, dem late demand, that's never happened. They're simply uh, looking to have licenses for resale for purposes of operating a bar at some point in the future. Um, so, Sir, that is two minutes. Again, as a reminder, uh, you may submit additional testimony in writing, but all testimony will be limited to two minutes. Thank you very much. Are there any other individuals who wish to testify regarding this matter? Yes, Tom Perkins. Okay, please state your address for the record. And again, please limit your comments to two minutes. Sure, uh, I'm at 33 Melrose Street in Boston. I'm the president, current president of the Bay Village Neighborhood Association. Um, I think we'd be okay with this if it was a 1 a.m. license and if there was some reasonable understanding as to when we get to the entertainment portion as to what the entertainment would be. I would echo John's comments that uh, uh, I haven't found the applicant here to be particularly good about reaching out to us. Um, as president, I did not get notification of him of this hearing as he promised, as the lawyer promised he would do, which is frustrating to me when I have to kind of chase this sort of stuff down. So uh, again, I understand it's a tough time for restaurants. We don't have time problem with things going to all alcohol. We're trying to be cooperative here. Um, it's not technically in Bay Village, but as John says, we're pretty close by and 1 a.m. would be fine for us. Um, entertainment's fine as long as it's restricted so it's not a endless bar operation. I just, want to know, I just want to know for the record, for everyone's listening, this is not a hearing on entertainment. Yes, I understand that. That comes later, later, but you know, we don't, we're not going to get notification of that either if the current uh, precedent holds. So I'm just going to stay focused on the, the application yeah. for us today. And I will so note 1 a.m. is okay with us. 2 a.m. I do not think is actually consistent with stuff on our, certainly not on our side of the pike. Thank you very much. Are there any other individuals who wish to testify regarding this application? Seeing no one, the board will take this matter under advisement. Thank you. Calling Kentucky Beverage Co. Inc. doing business as Claritin Wine Co. located at 563 Boylston Street. Holder of a retail package store, all alcoholic beverages license has petitioned to transfer the license from the above to 563 Boylston Inc. doing business as Whiskey and Wine Back Bay at the same location. Krupa Patel manager, 11 p.m. closing hour. Attorney William Kelly. Is Attorney Kelly present? Yes, good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the commissioners, Attorney Delaney Hawkins, thank you for uh, giving us this opportunity. This is a transfer of ownership staying the, at the same location of a pa so-called package store license that filed bankruptcy last July. Uh, apparently from uh, my pure memory and take that for what it's worth, uh, I understand that the prior operator Kentucky Beverage DBA Clarendon Wine Company may have gone dark uh, almost a year ago in May of approximately May of 2020 uh, and filed a bankruptcy with a filing date of July 17, 2020. Uh, and so the applicant 563 Boylston Street Inc. Uh, is looking for a transfer technically from the bankruptcy trustee of the estate of uh, Kentucky Beverage Co. Inc. Uh, that bankruptcy trustee went through the appropriate judicial process in the bankruptcy court and filed a motion for permission to transfer this license on certain terms and conditions, which I'll ad address in a minute. Um, and basically the court order that issued uh, authorized the trustee to transfer that asset out of the estate, uh, at, uh, in, the license as it existed on the date the bankruptcy was filed, which is July 17, 2020. Uh, the applicant corporation is uh, newly formed for the purpose of owning and operating this business that's gonna revitalize this particular location. 
Uh, there is one person involved in that corporation as disclosed in the application filed with you, and that is Krupa, uh, Krupa Patel. And Krupa is on, the, on this call and available for your questions. Uh, she is experienced in operating package stores. This is not her first foray into the package store business. Uh, and she is supported in this particular business operation with the advice and consultation of a person who has tremendous experience in the alcohol industry here in Massachusetts. And that person is uh, Mike Reardon. Mike is also on the call as well. Um, and we are looking for your vote to approve the transfer of ownership staying in the same name. Krupa has a new business that's coming into here and, to, and she has completely rebranded the operation. There's a new trade name to reflect that. Uh, and in fact, the new trade name is uh, stated in the application, Whiskey and Wine Back Bay, uh, substantially different. Uh, the focus of this business will be the sale of higher end products, high end whiskeys, high end wines uh, with five star service. And I think they have uh, been busy uh, making cosmetic changes to this physical location, upgrading the look so that the customer experience, once they step through the front door, will feel completely different. It will feel like an upscale package store that is being run. It will feel uh, and set the expectation of five-star service. Their business plan, quite frankly, is to be a good neighbor in, these, in this community and to be active in the community. This is not a single appearance to get a license and then pull up the drawbridge and uh, take refuge in the castle. They uh, pledge to have open communications with their neighbors and indeed are planning on uh, more direct involvement with the neighborhood associations. Um, and with that, um, I could um, open the, the floor uh, or have wonder if the commission has any questions of me or of Krupa. Uh, no, no questions of you, attorney. I just want to ask um, uh, Krupa, the manager of record questions. Yes. I don't see Krupa. Uh, I'm right I here. She, she's, she's on as KP191. Oh. Okay. I am. Is it possible to put your camera on? Sure. Hello. Hi. Thanks for joining us today, Ms. Patel. Are you a citizen? I am. Are you a resident of the Commonwealth? I am. I know your attorney uh, described that you do have experience in the food and beverage industry. Yes. And are you familiar with the rules and regs of this board, the ABCC and the laws of the Commonwealth as they pertain to the sale and service of alcohol? Yes. Okay, thank you. I have no other questions. Commissioners, do you? Okay, no questions. Are there any individuals who wish to testify regarding this application, beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Madam Chair, members of the board, Shanice Mantel with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. Um, the applicant was in communication with the Neighborhood Association of the Back Bay. Um, they were in non-opposition of the proposal. They did ask, of course, um, that no nips and singles be sold at the premises. Um, with that, given those um, terms, the mayor's office has no concerns or questions and would like to go on record in support. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other elected officials or representatives of elected officials who wish to testify? Seeing none, I see that uh, Conrad Armstrong has his hand raised. Hi, my name is Conrad Armstrong from 439 Marvel Street, representing the Neighborhood Association of Back Bay. Um, Mr. Kelly, Mr. Reardon met with us last month and now agreed to not oppose this. However, with the condition that they not sell nips, which wasn't something Mr. Keller mentioned, um, we didn't um, ask to allow, have not sell singles. That's actually been consistent uh, to not sell nips, but allow them to sell singles because some higher end beers are actually pretty expensive these days. Um, but not selling nips helps prevent alcoholics from buying nips and drinking them in public and discarding them in the public and private property. Um, so as long with that condition, not sell nips, then NAB does not oppose. Thank you. And Meg Mainzer Cohen has her hand raised. Oh, Meg, you're, you're muted. Sorry about that. We too met with this applicant and we're actually extremely happy to see this transfer because unfortunately the prior owners of Clarendon Wine sort of just went through a com complete steady decline over the years and I think that the events of May 31st were just too much and then the, the building was boarded up for, for many months. We're very excited about this um, new upgraded liquor store in the neighborhood 
And also the fact that they're not going to be selling nips because that is new to this location and there have been problems at, in Copley Square across the street. So we're, we are, we agree with NAB. This is a, a very, we, they, they don't oppose. We, we support this and we do welcome them to the neighborhood under this new, new agreement. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other individuals who wish to testify regarding this application? Seeing none, Attorney Kelly, can you confirm that your client has agreed to this condition of no nips? Well, uh, well um, we want, as I said, we want to be good neighbors. Um, I am stumped, quite frankly, with a legal question because it's coming out of a bankruptcy court. Uh, and and that, come, that presents two issues for us to agree to that I'm trying to uh, not get the uh, applicant in a condition of committing illegalities and violating bankruptcy court law um, from the get-go. And, and the first issue comes from the order of the bankruptcy court allowing the transfer as the license existed on July 17, the day that the bankruptcy was filed. Uh, I don't want to act in violation of that bankruptcy court order. And I, Attorney Kelly, uh, I will, <laughs> yes. If you would object, if you would like to put that in writing, we'll certainly review it and advise the board. We'll oh, okay. consult with the ABC. Oh yeah, I don't want to waste your time. I'd, okay. I'd be happy to convey that in, in, in writing. I'll address the email to attorney Delaney Hawkins. Thank you very much, attorney Kelly. The board Sorry, no, this, my apologies. No worries. The board will take this matter under advisement. Thank we'll you very much. Thank you. We will now move to items eight through 16. I will read these all into the record together uh, as they are part of one larger transaction. Um, Attorney Farnsworth, I would ask that once I read these into the record, if you could just provide an overview of the full transaction and then address the, um, there are a number of manager of record changes, if you could address those as well. Calling Legal Seafood LLC, located at Logan Airport, Terminal B, holder of an airport common vitular seven-day all-alcoholic beverages license, has petitioned to transfer the license from the above to LSF Logan Airport LLC, doing business as Legal Seafoods at the same location. Leonardo F. Lette, manager, closing hour 2 a.m., has secondly has petitioned to pledge the license to Northern Bank and Trust Company. The same licensee doing business as Legal Test Kitchen located at Logan Airport F2 Terminal A, holder of an airport common vitular seven day all alcoholic beverages license has petitioned to transfer the license from the above to LSF Logan Airport LLC doing business as Legal Test Kitchen at the same location. Leonardo Lette manager closing hour 2 a.m. has petitioned to pledge the license to Northern Bank and Trust Company. The same licensee doing business as Legal Seafoods Logan Airport Terminal E Holder of an airport common vitular seven day all alcoholic beverages license has petitioned to transfer the license from the above to LSF Logan Airport LLC at the same location. Leonardo Lette, manager, closing hour 2 a.m., has petitioned to pledge the license to Northern Bank and Trust Company. The same licensee doing business as Legal Seafoods located at Logan Airport Terminal C. Holder of an airport common vitular seven day all alcoholic beverages license has petitioned to transfer the license from the above to LSF Logan Airport LLC doing business as Legal Seafoods at the same location. Leonardo Lette, manager, closing hour 2 a.m., has petitioned to pledge the license to Northern Bank and Trust Company. The same licensee doing business as Legal Seafoods, Logan Airport Terminal B. Holder of an airport common vitular seven day all alcoholic beverages license has petitioned to transfer the license from the above to LSF Logan Airport LLC doing business as Legal Seafoods at the same location. Leonardo Lette, manager, closing hour 2 a.m., has petitioned to pledge the license to Northern Bank and Trust Company. The same licensee doing business as Legal Harborside, located at 270 Northern Avenue. Holder of a common vitular seven-day all-alcoholic beverages license has petitioned to transfer the license from the above to LSF Harborside LLC, doing business as Legal Seafoods at the same location. Joanna Shalek Brisky, manager, closing hour 2 a.m., has petitioned to pledge the license to Northern Bank and Trust Company. The same licensee doing business as Legal Seafoods, 100 Huntington Avenue. Holder of a common vitular seven day all alcoholic beverages license has petitioned to transfer the license from the above to LSF Copley Square LLC doing business as Legal Seafoods at the same location. Sean P. Donley manager closing hour 2 a.m. has petitioned to pledge the license to Northern Bank and Trust Company. The same licensee doing business as Legal Seafoods located at 255 State Street. 
holder of a common vigilar seven day all alcoholic beverages license has petitioned to transfer the license from the above to LSF Long Wharf LLC doing business as legal seafoods at the same location. Thomas Lowry manager closing hour 2 a.m. has petitioned to pledge the license to Northern Bank and Trust Company. And the same licensee doing business as legal crossing or LX located at 558 Washington Street. Holder of a common vigilar seven day all alcoholic beverages license has petitioned to transfer the license from the above to LSF Legal Crossing LLC doing business as Legal Crossing or LX at the same location. Maura Kavanaugh, Daniel manager, closing hour 2 a.m. has petitioned to pledge the license to Northern Bank and Trust Company. Attorney Trish Farnsworth. Is Attorney Farnsworth present? I am. Uh, good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board and Attorney Delaney Hawkins. Uh, this is a, um, I bet Attorney Hawkins needs a glass of water after all of that. Um, this is a, a large transaction. It involves 23 restaurants in five states. Um, here in Boston, there are nine locations. Five of those are at the airport. Um, the it's a transfer of ownership. All the restaurants are say, staying at the same locations that are being transferred these licenses. There are no changes in the operations. Um, much of the staff is remaining. Um, and the buyer is uh, Danu. Uh, it's a hospitality group out of Ireland. They are licensed here in the Commonwealth. They own Smith and Walensky. Uh, there's two. Um, here in Massachusetts, one in Boston, one in Wellesley. And uh, last year they purchased um, a few of the Strega restaurants from Nick Verano. So they are um, you know, qualified, they buy these brands, they uh, keep them, you know, and, and legals is well known. We all grew up with legals. So um, that's where we're at with this uh, transfer. And it's also, we're seeking a pledge for the financing. Uh, with Northern Bank. So I think, I don't know how you want to handle it, but we do have the managers for each of these in numbers eight through 12 of the airport. And so that manager is Leonardo Lette, and he should be on this call. He's the current manager um, on the existing license and he'll remain. And uh, he's on all five of those licenses over there at the airport. Attorney Farnsworth is Anyone that's a new manager of record not approved by this board? Yes, that is uh, Sean Donnelly. Okay, is Sean around? Is Sean here? Yeah, Sean speaking. All right, Sean, you're up. Um, are you a citizen? Yes. Are you a resident of the Commonwealth? Yes. Do you have experience in the food and beverage industry? Yes, I do. And are you familiar with the rules and regs of this board, the ABCC and the laws of the Commonwealth as they pertain to the sale and service of alcohol? Yes. Okay. I believe the next manager of record is Thomas Lowry. Attorney Farnsworth, is uh, Mr. Lowry an approved manager of record? Yes, he's the current manager and he's staying. He's been with legal since 2011. Great. And is Maura Kavanaugh Daniel an approved manager of record? Um, she was not on this license, but she was um, she was previously no, she was not on the license. Um, but she's been with Legal since 2013, and before that, she was with Back Bay Restaurant Group. But she should be on this call. All right. I, I am here. Hi. Do you guys mind turning your cameras on? We're, we're, we're trying to... Uh, I'm not quite sure how to get it on. Are you on an iPhone? Yes. Leslie, what's the, the iPhone? Liam, what's the... I, Commissioner Curran always remembers this. Uh, what's the iPhone trick? No, I don't know the iPhone. I'm sorry. Okay, um, I'm gonna ask you the manager of record questions. Um, we'd just like everyone to have their, their cameras on as we uh, approve you before the board. Um, are you a citizen? Yes. Are you a resident of the Commonwealth? Yes. 
Um, do you have experience in the food and beverage industry? Yes, I do. And are you familiar with the rules and regs of this board, the ABCC and the laws of the Commonwealth? As I am. Sale and service of alcohol. Okay, thank you. Are there any questions from the chairwoman or the commissioners regarding this transaction? <laughs> See, seeing none, are there any individuals who wish to testify regarding this matter, beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Are there any other individual? And Maura, uh, Daniel was able to turn her camera on, so we have confirmed. Yeah, that. I was just going to see. She's waving. She has her mask on, but yeah, she is right there. Are there any other individuals who wish to testify regarding this matter? Seeing none, the board will take this matter under advisement. Thank you very much. Thank you for your time. Calling BKW Partners, Inc. doing business is Connor Larkins, located at 329 Huntington Avenue. Holder of a common vigiler seven day wine and malt beverages with liqueurs license has petitioned to transfer the license and location from the above to Teetotal LLC doing business as Beacon Hill Books and Cafe located at 71 Charles Street. The premise consists of one large room on ground floor comprised of cafe space with dining area and banquet seating for 30. Service counter and kitchen located in rear 3,822 square feet. An annual outdoor patio located on private property at rear of the building with seating for approximately 15 patrons. Indoor and outdoor closing hour, 10 p.m. Melissa Fetter, manager, attorney Dennis Quilty. Is attorney Quilty present? Present here. Can you hear me? Yes, please go ahead. Good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board, attorney Delaney Hawkins, thank you for having us. This afternoon, Melissa Fetter is on with me. This uh, application is a um, highly anticipated in the Beacon Hill community as it uh, brings back a bookstore which folks in the neighborhood have been anxiously awaiting for many, many, many years. Uh, and it will re, uh, redo, if you will, the building, which for many, many years housed the famous Hungry Eye restaurant, which I'm sure the board is quite familiar with. So it's on that uh, portion of Charles Street, um, close, close to the common. So the project includes the complete rehabilitation of the space exterior, interior, and the creation of a uh, really world-class bookstore, including children's books, family reading groups, et cetera, et cetera. In addition, they would like to ask for a, um, the use of a, a, a beer, wine, and cordial license on this transfer for a cafe to be located in the bookstore space. This has been fully vetted with the Beacon Hill Civic Association, um, Zoning and Licensing Committee, they gave us their vote of, a, of approval or non-opposition. Uh, we've met and discussed with Councilor Box Office and uh, the Office of Neighborhood Services. Uh, we're unaware of any uh, opposition to the application as we come before you. With regard to Ms. Fetter's background, she is a resident of Beacon Hill. She's a US citizen, obviously a resident of the Commonwealth. Uh, her primary focus is the bookstore operations. She does not have uh, a background in the food and beverage industry, although she has familiarized herself with the rules and regs of the board and the rules regarding service of alcohol. She will uh, be the manager of record until a food and beverage manager is identified, and that person will then be brought before the board for a change of manager at that time. So we're here before you asking that you allow Ms. Fetter to be approved. Uh, in this kind of interim basis uh, while we go about the process of getting the store opened and hiring staff, et cetera. And then we'll be back in front of the board immediately on that topic. And again, I know Ms. Fetter is here uh, if you have any further questions of her. Muted. Kathleen, you're muted. Thank you. Uh, Attorney Quilty, thank you for um, covering all that, the manager of record questions um, and the public need. I just want to confirm there'll be seating for 15 people. It's yeah, well, inside, and then there's a patio at the rear for, yeah, for 15 people, it's the patio. Okay. And there's a dining area, okay. kind of special event 30. seating for 30. Yep. Okay. All right. Thank Twice. you. I, I read that wrong. I don't have any uh, further questions. Questions. Commissioners, do you? No questions. Seeing no additional questions, are there any individuals who wish to testify regarding this application, beginning with elected officials or their representatives? 
Um, Madam Chair, members of the board, Shanice Pimentel with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. Um, the Beacon Hill Civic Association voted in non-opposition to this proposal back when they went before the zoning board. Um, since then, they have no further questions or concerns. Um, so our office would like to, to go on record in support of the proposal. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Any other elected officials or representatives of elected officials who wish to testify? Are there any other individuals who wish to testify regarding this application? Seeing none, the board will take this matter under advisement. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Melissa. Thank you. Calling Kara Sodi's Showplace Rest Theaters, LLC, doing this business as Showplace Icon, located at zero block C, Seaport Square, 60 Seaport Boulevard. Holder of a common vigilar seven day all alcoholic beverages license is petitioned to transfer the license from the above to theater license holding LLC at the same location. Richard A. Marks, manager, closing hour 2 a.m. Attorney Dennis Quilty. Attorney Quilty. Good afternoon again, uh, Madam Chair, members of the board, Attorney Delaney Hawkins. Thank you very much. This uh, matter is a transfer of an existing license uh, from the present license to, which is the theater, which unfortunately has closed due to COVID, uh, seeking to transfer as part of their um, uh, lease arrangement with the landlord to uh, terminate the business, seeking to transfer the license as really the only asset back to an entity created by the landlord WS Development, uh, so that this license can be maintained and saved uh, uh, with the hope and desire that it will be transferred to a new tenant in the very near future. This is a similar action to which the board has agreed with um, some recent applications concerning restaurants in Kenmore Square at the Hotel Commonwealth and uh, on Boylston Street with the uh, Max Brenner restaurant. In all three cases, uh, light, uh, landlords created uh, entities to, to capture, if you will, the license while saving the asset to transfer to a future tenant. And that's exactly what would occur here in that regard. Mr. Marks, who's an executive of WS, who I believe is with us, uh, will be in a similar uh, position to Ms. Fetter, which is to say there will be no operation here. Uh, so his, although he's a citizen and a resident, uh, he has no particular background other than he represents the ownership. And again, this will be transferred to a new tenant with board approval, with community access and process and an, an approved manager of record at that time. And no other changes, obviously, to the license. Uh, it will be vacant until we're allowed to, able to, to move it. Okay. Um, I don't have any questions, commissioners, do you? Seeing no questions, are there any individuals who wish to testify regarding this application, beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Are there any other individuals who wish to testify regarding this application? Uh, Adam Castiglione has asked to testify. Uh, yes. Please state uh, your name and uh, address yes, for the record. Yes. Thank you. I'm Adam Castiglione, North End resident. Um, I just had a question about this. Does this mean there's another movie theater coming to this space? Can Can Attorney Quilty share that information? And And I guess my question is, why does this license not just reverse back to the city? Um, uh, uh, WF apparently uh, has some plans here. So just if you could share that with them, that's my comment. Mr. Thank you. Mr. Uh, Castiglione, uh, I will handle that. This is a transferable for value license. It was properly renewed. It does not transfer back to the city. At this time, the only legal standard before the board is the character and fitness of the applicant. Uh, as attorney Quilty testified, this is something very common that we're unfortunately seeing as a result of COVID that landlords uh, who have uh, the legal right to uh, purchase the license if the entity ceases to operate are seeking to hold it on a temporary basis while they identify new tenants. Um, again, this is unfortunately something we're seeing throughout the city and, and most likely throughout the state. So at this time, the question of the new um, operator or the new establishment is not before the board, but when that is identified, there will be a new hearing before the board. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Are there any other individuals who wish to testify? Seeing none, the board will take this matter under advisement. Thank you. Thank you. Calling Painted House LLC, doing business as Wonder Bar, located at 178 to 188 Harvard Avenue. 
holder of a common vigiler seven day all alcoholic beverages license has petitioned to transfer the license from the above to 186 Harvard Ave Bar LLC doing business as Han at the same location. Henry Wong, manager, closing hour 2 a.m. Attorney Dennis Qualty. Thank you again, uh, Madam Chair, members of the board, Attorney Del Delaney Hawkins, thank you for having us this afternoon. This is a standard uh, corp to corp transfer, no change of location. Uh, the existing establishment operated as the Wonder Bar for many years on Harvard Ave. Mr. Wong, who was with us this morning, is a well known uh, owner operator in the city of Boston and is a, an approved manager of record by this board. Uh, he is, of course, a US citizen and a re resident, has extensive experience in the food and beverage industry and will operate the establishment uh, in, in much the same way as it's been operated for many, many years as a, as a bar restaurant uh, operation. So no change to closing hour, layout, et cetera. Okay. And Mr. Wong should be with us if you I'm here. to speak. Uh, thank you for joining us, Mr. Wong, but I don't have any questions since you've already been approved as a manager of record by this board. Um, I don't have any questions for attorney Quilty. Commissioners, do you? Seeing no questions, are there any individuals who wish to testify regarding this application, beginning with elected officials? Yes, Madam Chair, members of the board, Connor Newman with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services, let go on record support of this proposal. Uh, the applicant met with the Alston Civic Association and received their full support. Uh, you should have a letter on file from Tony Isidoro, who's the president. Uh, we think this is a great way to continue uh, the vibrant nightlife that exists in Alston Village. Thank you. Thanks, Connor. Are there any other individuals who wish to testify regarding this application? Uh, Alston Village Main Street? Uh, yes. Um, for the record. Yeah, hi, uh, my name is Alex Cornaccini. I'm the executive director of Alston Village Main Streets. I'd also like to speak in support of this transfer. Mr. Wong has gone through the community review process and has support from the Alston Civics Association and Connor Newman, Connor Newman from the mayor's office. So yes, we support this. Thank you. Are there any other individuals who wish to testify? Seeing none, the board will take this matter under advisement. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Calling Boston Culinary Group, Inc. doing business as Center Plate, located at 290 Northern Avenue. Holder of a common vitular seven-day wine and malt beverages with liqueurs license has petitioned to transfer the license and location from the above to the Balance Patch 1031 Inc. doing business as Balance Patch located at 1031 Commonwealth Avenue. The premise consists of one large room on ground floor with video game stations, dining and cafe area with kitchen and bar, storage and office space, restrooms in rear, separate event space and three private gaming rooms, total square footage of 6,357 with a seating capacity of 112. Closing hour, 2 a.m., Peter Lind, manager, attorney Dennis, Quil attorney Dennis Quilty. Attorney Quilty. Thank you again, <clears throat> Madam Chair, members of the board, Attorney Delaney Hawkins, thank you for having us here. This, this too, uh, like the bookstore, is a very exciting um, uh, situation. The Balance Patch, which is an e-sports center, has been opened at the, open at this location since August of 2017 and licensed by this board with a common vitular license. Uh, they have operated uh, since that time with, with absolutely no violations, disturbances, or any other concerns raised in the surrounding community. Um, they've been, in short, a very good neighbor. Uh, they seek to apply for a, the um, CV malt and wine uh, and liqueurs license, which formerly operated at the uh, then Rockland uh, Bank Pavilion. I think the names have changed again. There will be a new application for that site. I just would like the board to know. Um, but this license had to be moved out uh, first, if you will. And as I suggested to uh, the Lynns, and I know uh, Peter is with us today, uh, they're very excited to hear when I told them that this license originated. This license was the Harry M. Stevens license at Fenway Park for probably 75 or 80 years until Fenway got an all out and transferred it out to the pavilion years ago. So. They're very happy to hear that. In the process of uh, getting ready for today, we've met with um, Councilor Breeden, had a very terrific uh, meeting, Zoom meeting with she and her staff, which went very well, I believe and hope that they will be supportive of this. Uh, we spoke to Mr. Isidoro of the Austin Civic Association. Uh, we went over the background of them having been approved by the Civic Association in 2017, and he did not require a meeting. 
Uh, we did have an abutters meeting with uh, um, ONS uh, at which there was uh, no opposition to it. So I, I hope as we arrive before you, uh, we have uh, uh, no opposition and plenty of support. Mr. Lind uh, is the manager of the CV license. Uh, he's not a manager of, of an alcohol premise yet. Um, he is a US citizen, is a mass resident, and he is uh, familiar with uh, the rules and regulations of the board and laws of the Commonwealth with regard to the sale and service of alcohol. And uh, Mr. Lynn is with us, if you have any questions of him. Um, I don't have any questions. Um, Commissioners Saxon or Curran? Seeing none, are there any individuals who wish to testify regarding with, uh, beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Yes, Madam Chair, members of the board, Connor Newman with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services, Link over record and support of this proposal. As you heard from the applicant, we conducted an abutters meeting on March 9th. Uh, they provided a very charming presentation on you know, the type of customers they attract and the culture they foster there. Uh, we don't think that a liquor license would be any concern to the neighborhood. Uh, we did share information with community stakeholders such as Boston University and uh, the nearby Match Charter School. And unaw we are unaware at this time of any concerns from them. Um, so we think this is gonna be a great addition for the neighborhood. Thank you. Thank you, Connor. Thank you. Are there any other individuals who wish to testify regarding this application? Seeing none, the board will take this matter under advisement. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Calling, Thank you. El, calling El Burns Service Corporation located at 584 Columbus Avenue has applied for a retail package store malt and wine license to be exercised on the above. Premise includes a building at 584 Columbus Avenue that has three floors, 1150 square feet, a basement for storage, middle floor with two rooms where business is conducted in an upstairs office with two rooms. Outside the building are six fueling stations that are open 24 hours. Sale of alcohol will cease at 11 p.m., 10 p.m. Sundays. Manager Scott Goldberg. This is a 24 hour operation, but again, the, uh, the sale of alcoholic beverages will cease pursuant to Massachusetts general law. Who is present on behalf of the licensee? Hi, I'm Scott Goldberg. Please go ahead. Thank Howard, you. Howard, are you unmuted? Please unmute yourself. Can you unmute yourself? Please unmute yourself, Dad. Oh, I think he's trying. I know. A minute. Okay. Am I there? Yes, you are. I, All right. I just want to say uh, thank you, Commissioners Curran Saxon and uh, Chairwoman Joyce, uh, neighbors and fellow business owners who may be on this call. We really pre appreciate you giving, uh, giving us the opportunity to hear us today. Uh, that being said, should we continue with our with our ideas? Yes. Okay. Uh, my dad, having the most experience in the South End, probably of anyone, uh, I'd like you to start and, and share your thoughts with uh, our license. That's sure. Good afternoon, Alcohol Licensing Board and interested parties on our application for a beer and wine license. I think it's important that you know the history of how we've progressed into the South End and how long we've been there and what our family is about. My name is Howard Goldberg. I am co-owner of the Elburn Service Corporation and the property at 584 Columbus Avenue in the South End, Boston, at the intersection of Mass and Columbus Avenue. My father, and Scott's grandfather started out servicing the area in 1938 at the corner of Ruggles and Columbus Avenue. In 1944, he purchased 584 Columbus Avenue at the intersection of Mass and Columbus Avenue. We've serviced for over 80 years in the neighborhood, my family, my father, myself, and now Scott. We've serviced the neighborhood. We've serviced travelers. We've serviced anybody who came by or drove by on the 17 mile drive of Mass Ave. 
We've always supported the local community. We've done our best to keep a responsible, reliable operation and always caring about the South End as number one. There were times in 1906, in the 60s, when we had to almost abandon our property because of the unrest and the activity that was going on in that time period. At that time, we were a filling station in a small repair shop. And we serviced the community and we would come to work the next morning and we would find our windows smashed. We'd find our property vandalized, but we stuck it out and we had faith in the community and we wanted the South End to survive. I myself was born in Roxbury. I grew up in the South End working on Columbus Avenue. We have, I was taught strong business ethics by my father. Our reputation from right up to today and our business operations have been impeccable. There isn't a red mark on us. We have concerns about our customers. We have concerns about the neighborhood. We are there. We love the South End and we wanna be there and we wanna service the South End neighbors. I'm probably one of the longest small businesses in operation today in the South End and probably in the Boston area. I'm up there, all right. And I've taught my, I've taught my fam family the right things to do, respect people, operate properly, and to respect your neighbors and all people of this world. We're here today asking the support of the South End neighborhood and abutting neighborhoods to support us in our request on this application to sell a beer and wine, sell beer and wine. I think we have proven ourselves over 80 years that we're responsible. We are always there. We are reliable. We are there. We are, we create a safety area in the neighborhood. We are well lit 24 seven. And I, we have an operation that we have managed for 80 years. And I believe that we have been an asset to the South End, not a detriment. And I ask to look, ask the board to look on us favorably on our request. And uh, we are there and we care about the South End. We are supporters of youth programs. We are supporters of the Children's Hospital. We support Pine Street. We support Rosie's Place. We are giving to the community. And I hope it's, it's thought of by the board and to the residents of this community to accept our request and approve unconditionally the beer and wine license that we are requesting. And I thank you for being here and I appreciate
appreciate your time and hopefully things will work out positively for us. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Goldberg. Um, I want to ask you, is it your son, Scott? Hi, hi, Chairman. Scott, are you going to be the manager of records? Should this license be granted? Yes. I also so Scott, have some things to say if that's okay. Okay, I'm just going to swear you in first and then we can get to your, your, um, your testimony. Um, but just so we get the, these things on the record, are you a citizen? Yes. Are you a resident of the Commonwealth? Yes. Um, do you have experience in the food and beverage industry? Yes. Are you familiar with the rules and regs of this board, the ABCC and the laws of the Commonwealth as they pertain to the sale and service of alcohol? Yes. Okay, I just wanted to make sure we had those on the record. So go ahead. As my dad said, uh, Elburn Service was established in 1944 by my grandfather, Elliot, and great uncle Bernard. Hence, where, that's where you get the name Elburn Service Corp. And we've been a surviving member uh, of this evolving community since that time. Uh, I personally, I worked at the location since I was seven years old. My mother would drive me from Canton to Boston every weekend so I could fill the cars up all day and check oil. I made 10 times more tips than the dollar my dad would pay me at the end of the day. But it was great to work alongside family. In the 1990s, my dad rebuilt this location and is what you see today with a historically compliant, one-of-a-kind train station style canopy, which was installed to replicate the train stations that used to thrive along Tremont Street. We had to be very open-minded back then, working with the Historical Society and the city, and we'll continue that tradition of working with Boston and the local community for as long as we are here. In order to stay in business this long, you have to do things the right way. You have to be fair and just. Our diverse employee base has mostly been with us for years. And those that have moved on to work in hospitals, larger companies, or going to higher education still check in with us. At the end of each shift, well, without further ado, we are here today to ask obviously for the beer and wine license. And the reason I'm asking for this license today, at the end of each shift, when my employees hand in a shift report, there's a blank space and they have, they're instructed, what, Whenever a customer asks for something that we don't have, please let us know. And the one thing that's always come, it's been for years, has been beer or wine. And in previous years, I never really considered it. But now what happened was over the last few years, I see a push for more package stores to carry beer and wine. And I've noticed in the surrounding area that they, there are corporate sponsored stores that have this license. And with the city and state championing small businesses, there's really no better time than to ask for this license. And from the few virtual calls we've recently had with the abutters, we've heard the opposition and we heard you. Certainly they were very vocal, but not extremely numerous for us to say, we can't move forward with this. So after the abutters meeting, we went and garnered more support. Hopefully you got many letters of support. I know hopefully there's a couple people who testify for us today. Um, the, the biggest issue we found was, we, it's a fact that the Boston Comprehensive Set Treatment Center is 1.2 miles away from our location. In City Talk, that's a far distance. But the fact is some of the patients use the Mass Ave train station to get from uh, the train station to the treatment center. But they are not our customers. Very few, if any, ever approach our store or loiter around our property. They don't have the funds or ID to purchase age-restricted products. Okay, And even further, they most certainly do not have a credit card to match an ID, which will be required to purchase uh, uh, an ounce of beer or wine. Being as unique a location as we are, we will have unique restrictions going above and beyond what is required by the city. I've heard Mass Ave residents right down the street complain about the patients loitering in front of their stairs and doing things no one should have to see. We installed the highest quality, brightest lighting around. And that is one of the reasons, along with 24 hour video surveillance and our diligence, because it starts with us, we don't have people gathering, nor we to find any paraphernalia littered on our grounds. What I would suggest to the abutters who are so against us because of this reason, it's really we don't have any effect of. If to help alleviate the issue, then push for more lighting on Mass Ave facing out from your properties. It's just too dark walking up 
that street at night. So they avoid us, of course, but they go to the darker spots. So we're by no means a negative catalyst for what happens around your property. We would also support any community initiative to brighten our sidewalks. It's also a fact that there is a small store west of Columbus that offers beer and wine. And we've heard from neighbors as far as West Springfield, who are even closer to that location, that they would rather be given an opportunity for a contactless transaction and not have to walk inside a store to purchase their products. Because we all know COVID has sig significantly changed the way we do business, the way we interact with people, and we really do offer the best solution. And this is obviously a major issue, even though restrictions are lifting, it's still a problem that's gonna be here for the foreseeable future. And we believe a major reason for considering granting us this license. Here, we have a well-run, in good standing, small business, offering customers a safe, well-lit and sanitized way to shop. Our employees, even distanced by the thick glass, still wear masks and often gloves to process transaction. We've also been asked about student traffic and fake IDs. We're a half a mile from Northeastern. I'm sure there's many other package stores around town that are even closer to universities, but we're still gonna implement a strictly enforced policy for IDs to match a credit card. And if a cash transaction, two forms of ID. And as you can see from our tobacco licensing history, our employees are well versed in asking for identification and able to say no. We also have an advantage over some walk-in stores because we, we have a huge showcase where we see traffic coming east, west, north, south, oh, really north, west, and east. But our, we can see our customers coming from 50 feet away, where is the smaller stores, you have three feet to walk in the door, go to the counter. We can visually assess potential client behavior before they even reach our window. And we fully understand that the granting of this license, it is by no means a forever license. We will not rest on laurels. It's a huge responsibility to maintain such a license and we'll do everything possible to maintain a seamless operation. Because we fully understand the burden of ownership it begins and ends with us and we're responsible for our property and making sure everyone feels safe while shopping and or filling up. You have to run a tight ship. And what we do is we constantly train and retrain our employees. In fact, should you grant us the license before we sell an ounce of beer and wine, we're gonna all go through tips training to help spot IDs, minors, people who have already been overserved. I wouldn't serve it up without going through that process first. As you can tell, I hope you can hear from my voice. I love what I do. I want to continue supporting the South End. And the environment's changing so fast. I want to keep up with it. And please help us, uh, give us a chance and, and believe in the ownership here. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Goldberg, a question for either you or Howard. Um, how much space in the, in, the, um, in the middle floor, I guess, is going to be taken up with the beer and wine? How much? How much space we have, do you we have eight refrigerators and well, four, four, three in the main room and then you have five plus a freezer. So what we'll do is right now we have repetitive cold beverages where we have too much of you know, Coca-Cola and water's all stacked up in different refrigerators. So we have to, we're going to tighten that up, move things over and basically dedicate four refrigerator, refrigerators to beer and wine. I mean to beer rather um, and whatever else is allowed under the license. So four refrigerators or eight? Four for the, the for at least four for the beer and wine. Okay, okay. Large refrigerators. Plus, I, mean, I don't think, not that we haven't done this before, but not everything has to be cold or sold cold. Like, like I've seen in the- Yeah, I'm, just, I'm trying to get a feel for how much of your current uh, retail space are you removing to make room for the- oh, we're, not, we're, we're not really removing anything. Right now, I have a showcase of, okay. of household products. Okay. And, and, and uh, tons of, of sodas and, and everything. So it's, it's almost overloaded. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to really tighten it up and put outside billboards and more signage for items that people that we already have to make more room for the beer and wine, as well as additional signage for that also outside to replace some aging signs. Okay. We're gonna rework it. And obviously it's a work in progress. It's not just like, okay, it's our first day of beer and wine. Let's get a huge delivery. Let's see how the community adapts. Let's see what's requested because it's a smaller 
store, you know, there are people who want certain things. So what I do, like I said, we get what customers ask, I adjust to the community and I'll, and it'll be kind of a, it's not like a, a jam one day, have everything. I want it to be a buildup. I don't want to overload anybody. I want to, I'm going to be there all the time to make sure it's, it's a work process. I don't want to have any, you know, too many growing pains while we're doing this. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, Commissioner Saxon or Commissioner Curran, do you have any questions? Could you just explain the contact list element again? Okay, sure. Um, you've probably never been to our store. It's a, we have giant glass windows on, 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 across the whole front. Customers are not allowed in our store. We have a huge drawer, which we have microphones on each side and clear visibility, light shining down. So a customer comes to the window, it's just basically I hope we're staring each other now, say what you want, check out, get the IDs, make sure everything's right. And then it's a push out drawer where you can fit a lot more than you think. Right now we can fit two bottles of antifreeze, which is large. So, I mean, up to 12 packs would be a no problem. Those small seltzers would be no problem. So that's also, by contact list. Excuse me, also every transaction is videoed. So we have full control. We will watch our, if we are not there physically, we are there, we monitor it from our homes. We are watching it on our iPhones. We watch our business 24 seven. And believe me, I'm up at one, two o'clock in the morning watching. Thanks. <laughs> okay, perfect. Commissioner um, Curran? Not at this time, thank you. Thank you, seeing no additional questions. We will now turn to public testimony. As a reminder, you will be limited to two minutes. The board does not give additional weight to, to spoken testimony than it does written testimony. If your testimony is the same as that of an individual who has already testified, please keep in mind everyone's time today as we still have additional items on the agenda and please simply state your position and what you reiterate, if anything. Again, you can also submit written testimony. We will begin, oh, I'm sorry, and when you are called to testify, please put your name, if you can, and your address in the chat um, or use the raise hand function. And when I call you, please state your address for the record. We will begin with elected officials or representatives for elected officials. Um, Hi, yes. Um, good afternoon, Madam Chair and members of the board. My name is Kim Crucioli from the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. The Mayor's Office would like to go on record in opposition of this proposal. Our office held an abutters meeting on April 7th, where only opposition was shown by abutters. The applicant also met with abutters on April 20th to address concerns where further opposition was shown. I've received 11 letters of support and 25 letters of opposition, including letters of opposition from the Claremont Neighborhood Association, as well as from as well as from the Fenway Community Development Corporation. Although the applicants are respectful residents and business owners, we feel that this proposal does not fit in with the area and will cause unintended negative impacts in this area of the South End. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other elected officials or representatives of elected officials who wish to testify? Seeing none, we will begin with uh, Richard Giordano located, uh, I'm sorry, with the Fenway CDC. Please state your home address. Attorney Delaney Hawkins, uh, members of the licensing board, thank you for the opportunity to testify. My name is Richard Giordano. Uh, my home address is 129 Fisher Avenue in Roxburgh. Uh, I work for the Fenway Community Development Corporation. Uh, primary address is 70 Burbank Street in the Fenway. We own the Newcastle Saranac apartment building uh, directly across the street. Uh, purchased about two years ago. Uh, it's all affordable housing. We just finished rehabbing it. Many of our residents uh, are opposed to this. We are concerned for safety and alcohol abuse. Um, Fenway CDC has a record actually of working with uh, service providers uh, trying to take care of homeless and alcoholics and substance abusers up and down Mass Ave. That's one of the responsibilities of my job. I'm very very familiar with what goes on on Mass Ave. Um, we are here to say, frankly, this does nothing for the neighborhood. There is no need, as the Claremont Neighborhood Association has pointed out, there are five other uh, takeout convenience and package places and short walk. Um, this is a very peculiar situation with a gas station asking for an alcohol license for beer and wine. Uh, there is no need in the neighborhood. It's redundant. 
uh, it serves no purpose other than the bottom line at the gas station. Um, and uh, we see no reason to grant it. Uh, also, just so you know, Rep Santiago has also sent in a letter in opposition along with Claremont Neighborhood Association. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Um, calling Julie Muir. Please state your address for the record. Hi, my name is Julie Muir. Um, my address is 377 Pond Street in Rockland, Mass. I am the consultant for the station, the gas station. I work for um, a gasoline distributor. And I just wanted to show support of Scott and Howard. They do run a very well maintained shell station. They've been in compliance with all the gas regulations. They do it before they have to. They have scored very high on the image sheets. We haven't had any um, customer complaints. Um, and we recently just signed a new 10 year contract with them. So I know that they'll be shell in well image for at least another 10 years. Thank you very much. Are there any other individuals who wish to testify? I see that um, Christopher Dady has raised his hand. Uh, sir, please state your address for the record. Hi, um, I own Render Coffee at 563 Columbus Avenue in the South End. And uh, I'm coming out in support of their application. Um, they've been, uh, I've been there 10 years and they've been great neighbors. Um, they keep a very clean and well-run site. And um, I think it'd be a great convenience for the neighborhood being able to fill up and uh, you know purchase alcohol. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Bob Barney has his hand raised. Sir, could you please unmute yourself and state your address for the record? Sure, my name is Bob Barney. I live at 463 Massachusetts Avenue. So I'm directly around the corner from this gas station. Uh, the first thing I'd like to say is I think the Goldbergs are wonderful business neighbors. They really maintain a wonderful uh, place for us in our neighborhood. And we're very supportive of their existing business model. Um, but as you probably would have seen, we've got mostly all of butters, people that live here that oppose this proposal. Um, part of the complication or difficulty is the walk up to a window to purchase alcohol. I don't think we've seen that business model anywhere, certainly in the South End or Lower Roxbury. Um, so we're fully opposed to this. Uh, it's a very challenging area. Uh, we have a lot of implications from different types of addiction and supportive housing problems. So we're fully opposed to this proposal. Uh, but again, we really support the Goldbergs. It's just that this doesn't fit within our neighborhood. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Cassandra De La Sandra has requested to testify. Please state your address for the record. Hi, um, I'm Cassandra De La Sandra, and I'm representing the Board of Trustees at 451-453, direct adjacent um, tenants or owners. Um, we represent 10 immediate um, owners, and we are in opposition of the um, proposal, backing up basically what you've just heard from Bob and also from Rob. Thank you very much. Are there any other individuals who have not previously testified who wish to testify regarding this application? Seeing no one, the board will take this matter under advisement. Thank you very much. Thank you. Calling 552 Tremont LLC, doing business as the butcher shop located at 552 Tremont Street, has applied for common vigilar seven day all alcoholic beverages license to be exercised on the above. Premise includes 1,713 square feet on ground floor, one main room with bar, seating capacity 30, kitchen and storage and basement, main entrance exit on Tremont Street, additional exit on Waltham Street, manager Barbara Lynch, closing hour 1 a.m., attorney Kristen Scanlon, for the record, this uh, licensee currently home, holds a wine and malt beverages license. Attorney Scanlon. Thank you. Good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board. Kristen Scanlon representing the applicant licensee along with Barbara Lynch, who is the owner and existing manager of record of the establishment. Uh, we're currently seeking um, uh, to upgrade the butcher shop's beer, wine, and cordials license to any available all alcohol beverages license at this address, which is 552 Tremont Street in the south end. Uh, technically is a Roxbury address, and if granted approval, they would turn their existing uh, license back into the city. 
Um, by way of background, the butcher shop first opened in 2003, where they originally opened with a beer and wine license for the first three years. And then in 2006, added cordials to their license. Uh, since that time, they have been an exemplary licensee with no violations to speak of and have been a true small scale South End neighborhood gem. It's a perfect place uh, for a glass of wine and a small bite, a meal with friends and to enjoy um, the neighborhood. The menu highlights meat and produce from local farms and vendors with whom Chef Barber has built uh, decades long relationships. For years, the restaurant has gotten creative with their cocktail offerings with what they were allowed to serve under the cordials license. But as of late, and this was very, uh, this was pre COVID and very much since COVID, customers and regulars have been asking for the restaurant to seek and obtain a full alcohol license so that they can begin to serve true cocktails, uh, martinis, for example. With the limited size and space at the restaurant, it only has 30 seats. It makes little financial sense for the restaurant to pay uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars for a full license. And when we started this discussion during COVID, it made even less sense uh, with the restrictions placed on licensees in the restaurant industry in light of the pandemic. Uh, the cocktail list would stay fairly similar to what it is right now. They would just be adding things like martinis, other well drinks, and obviously customer requests. Um, as far as public need is concerned, a full license um, at the end of the day does enhance the customer experience for some people, as evidenced by the push uh, from especially loyalists to the restaurant requesting them to see this upgrade. Uh, right now, business is down anywhere between 60 and 70 percent, even with the outdoor seating that has been granted to them. Um, um, in light of the pandemic, and they're really doing what they can to stay alive and thrive at this location. Um, the license would have aided, obviously, prior to COVID and saving a customer that they might otherwise lose because of the drink offering restriction uh, based on their existing license, but it's now more imperative than ever and definitely a lifeline now. They've been a true neighborhood business that has withstood the test of time for nearly two decades in the South End based on the quality and caliber of its operations and offerings. They've always been a good neighbor. Actually, in the beginning of COVID, they were the only game in town doing takeout uh, for a while. Uh, other nearby restaurants um, in the area mostly have full alcohol licenses, which this would level the playing field a bit, but also keeps a unique variety of restaurants serving in that area complementary to one another in the neighborhood. Um, and this licensee um, keeps this license at this location and or a license, I should say, with a local attentive and respected operator in the neighborhood. So the upgrade would only serve to complement the surrounding neighborhood and won't change the fundamental business. Uh, we did meet with local abutters in the Eight Streets neighborhood organization who had no opposition to this application. Other than that, no changes are proposed to the business. Seating remains the same. Um, Barbara Lynch would still be the manager of record who was previously approved by this board in the ABCC. And the closing hour remains the same on its face at 1 a.m., which is more so to uh, cater to special events, but the restaurant does habitually close between 9 and 11 p.m. depending on the day of the week. Happy to address any questions or concerns the board might have. Um, I don't have any questions or concerns at this point. I think you did a good job explaining, um, you know, in your, uh, what the public need is here. Um, so we have 30 seats? Yes. Okay. Um, I don't have any further questions, commissioners. No questions. No questions. Are there any individuals who wish to testify regarding this application, beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Hi, yes. Good afternoon, Madam Chair and members of the board. My name is Kim Crucioli from the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. The Mayor's Office would like to go on record in support of this proposal. The applicant conducted community outreach and received a letter of non-opposition from the Eight Streets Neighborhood Association. The proposal is consistent with many other restaurants in the neighborhood that already have a full liquor license. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, Madam of the Chair, members of the board, Anna Calderon from Councillor Flynn's office. The councillor would like to go on record in support based on good community process, work with neighbors and civic organizations, and a strong professional ownership. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other individuals who wish to testify regarding this application? Seeing no one, the board will take this matter under advisement. Those are all the items before the board today. Thank you all very much. Thank you.